Hello, I'm Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel. So recently I reached 4k. Thank you all so much for subscribing. Uh, it's been wonderful being in the booktube community. And so I posed a question to all of you. What do you want me to do to celebrate? And you guys voted to have a Dylan vlog. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to plan out a day for Dylan and we're just going to follow him around on his adventures. And yeah, it's going to be pretty great. So that's in the works and uh, Samuel's actually really excited to do it as well. So uh, we're both very enthusiastic about our corgi care and adventures. So <laughs> that will be coming later this month. Uh, but today we're going to do the first part of my March wrap up. So once again, I split it up into middle reader and YA for today. And next time we'll talk about some different types of books as well. All right, so first up, I have a book that I reread, and that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. And this is a mystery novel. Now, it's actually part one of, I think it's a trilogy, it could be longer, uh, but it's just part one. So it ends on this huge cliffhanger, and I really enjoyed this book. And the second time through, I was able to see the foreshadowing and different things. Um, and Stevie is the protagonist of this book, and she has gone to this school, this very prestigious school in New England, and it's like a genius school and she you apply and you get in there's no tuition so she goes in as a crime like solver person and the crime that she wants to solve is what happened to the founder of the school's wife and that happened in the early 1900s so we have her trying to solve that larger mystery but also some mysteries happen while she's at school so last year this came out so i reread it and then I started with The Vanishing Stare. And this is the second book in the series. I'm sorry, Dylan's over there pouting and making these whining noises. So if you, you hear this like humph kind of noise, the sighing, that's him. He lives a hard life. Anyway, so we have The Vanishing Stare. Now this one, this one I much more enjoyed the flashbacks to the original mystery a lot more than the present day mystery. I know part of this is because I'm not a teenager and this is a YA book, but I found Stevie, she just always made the wrong decision. It was like any decision she was given, it was like, what is the best decision? What is the worst decision? I will make the worst decision. And then everything is so overly dramatic. Everything is such a big deal. And I know that's part of being a teenager. I know probably as a teenager, I would have enjoyed that part, but that's just not something I enjoyed at the moment. Um, I am very, I'm looking forward to finding out the end of the mystery. I'm assuming that's the next book and finding out what's happening. I, I think it's a fun read, but I felt like some of the depth and complexity was lost in the second book because she set up these really awesome mysteries in the first book and the reveals were a bit of a letdown for me personally. So yeah, I didn't enjoy the second one as much. Unfortunately, I felt like it had like this sophomore in the series slump, though Maureen Johnson has written a lot of other books, but you know what I'm saying. So those were those two books. Um, I finally got my hold from the library of Wondersmith. Uh, this is the second book in the Nevermore series. So I read this one back in the fall, I think. And then this one finally came in for me and I really enjoyed it. I, I mean, it was just as fun and uh, quirky and complex as the first one. I, I just love them so much. They're great middle reader novels. And there's definitely something I want to buy my nephew once he gets old enough. And this is The Calling of Morgan Crow, where this is where she is solving I guess, not mysteries, but she's like problem solving and it's like her story in this magical Alice in Wonderland like school and uh, the mysteries behind who she is and what her magical abilities are and what they mean for her. I can't really tell you the details. It's a spoiler of the first book, but still just as delightful as the first one. And so this I think counts as my like middle reader March pick. It's, it's a lot of fun. I, I can't really think of anything else to say than I really loved it. <laughs> Uh, it's perfect for when you're really stressed and you need something like calm. Now the next book is going to be a little difficult for me to review um, and that is The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chakshi and that's because I, as many of you know, have chronic daily headaches and migraines and have to listen to the audio so I've listened to the audio of all the books I've mentioned today and I only really note them if they're really good or really bad and this was a really bad narrator's 
uh, well, one narrator, technically, the one I didn't like. So this is a book set in Paris in the late 1800s, but the narrators are American, and they give French accents to all of the characters, but then their main narration of, like, what's happening is in an American accent. And if any of you have heard an American do a French accent, it is so bad. It is so bad and it makes it funny. It just doesn't work. So I can't recommend the audio for this at all. I, I really, it really made the book suffer, I think. So, but I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the adventure story, the mystery, and it's just a fun book. It's a what definitely a YA book, but I felt like I just couldn't really get into it because of the narrators. If you want to know what this is about, this is about a group of like found family kind of friends living in the 1800s Paris and there are these secret societies and uh, this one guy has been wrongfully denied his place as the head of society because he is a biracial uh, guy. And there's lots of diversity in this book. There's neurodiversity as well in a character. There's racial diversity. There is uh, people of different sexualities and backgrounds and different things and I feel like that is very well done in how she incorporates that because there are different uh, historical things happening at the time and she kind of weaves that in there so it's not like she's just you know checking off boxes she's actually like they're here because of this reason and I found that very interesting how she wove that together I also found it interesting how she played out the secret society with the different characters and what's going to happen so I will hopefully just like read the print version of the second one and get back with you. But yeah, that's the general plot. And I don't want to tell you anything else because when you have secret societies, there are lots of spoilers. The last book I'm going to talk to you today about is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Um, and this is a finalist for the Nebula Award, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Hopefully it will be on the Hugo list later this year because I really enjoyed this book. Uh, this book is inspired by uh, this, I don't know, for lack of, it sounds like a ancient China, but it's, the plot is actually based on uh, was it 20th century events happening in China, but it's then removed from our actual world and it's like in a totally high fantasy fantastical world just merely like inspired by and you can see on this map you can see on the map there that you have like this giant country like you would have there's what would be Mongolia up there and then you have Japan what would be Japan over there and I found that very interesting because there's a lot of parallels with that history but obviously this is a completely fantastical world and we follow Rind who is a young girl she has a darker complexion than most of the people and she's a war orphan from the first first poppy war previous war, most recent war, which is like 20 years ago. And so anyway, she ends up in this school because she takes this test. She tests into like the most elite school and it's a war like strategy type school and she gets in. And so the first part is her learning to, you know, be at this school and the struggles that she has just trying to stay in the school. And then the second part is like war breaks out again in the country and what that looks like. And this is a very interesting story and what the author does with Rin as a character is very interesting, especially near the end. And I don't want to give any spoilers, but um, the big magic part of this is that there are shamans and they can commune with the gods. But the problem is that a lot of times these shamans eventually go insane because the god is like speaking in their head and they just go insane. And so they're like an elite group of people people that there's a lot of controversy around on what they're allowed to do. I will say this does have about every single trigger warning in the book and is very descriptive. However, it is only on certain pages. So what I'm going to do is uh, link a review by Sachi. She is a bookstagrammer uh, and she is Japanese American. So she read this book and then she for me because I asked I was like can you just write down the page numbers for me so she wrote down the page numbers so that if you want to just skip the chapter uh that I'm particularly thinking about you can and I don't think you're going to lose anything from the narrative by just skipping the chapter um but if you know anything about the history of China during World War II you probably know what I'm talking about if not no plot spoilers at all then so anyway I buddy read this with Russell over at Ingram Paper Blog I will link his channel down below 
we both really enjoyed this book and it was great to chat with him about all that was going on. I mean, it, this book lit our brains on fire and we're just like going back and forth about all the things that are happening with, you know, discussion of gender, discussion of war, of plot complexities and what she's trying to do with this and what's going to happen in the second book. And that comes out, I think, in August of this year. And so I'm very excited for this. I believe the audiobook narrator of this is Emily Wuzeller, and she does a great job. I've read several books that she narrates, including um, I think Bury What We Cannot Take, and I think Soy Sauce for Beginners might be narrated her by her as well. And I think own voices narrators are really important, so I was so appreciative that they chose her as the narrator. Yeah, this book is is fabulous, and I, you know, I have some questions that have happened at the end, and it was just a really like I just kept turning the pages like I didn't want to have to put it down to re go read other stuff for work or anything I was like I just want to read this to stay and it is a very long audio but totally worth it and I'm so excited for the second one and this is a debut so any critiques I have will mainly be just like some clumsy things that happen I think in a lot of debut novels and it's just not as tight it's not as finished as it could be but this is a really great debut novel it's, it's a really fun novel period but it's a really great debut novel and I look forward to seeing where her imagination goes next so congratulations to R.F. Kuang like solid book I'm not sure if it's technically a YA book but if it is it's probably an older YA because of the trigger warnings that I mentioned and I am not sure if it's a an adult book I don't know the protagonists are teenagers um, but if you do give this to a teenager just be aware that there is that a really intense content in the book and you might want to read it first or at least go over that particular content again I will have like the page numbers and things linked down below so you can go check that out if you need to um, I just want to make give people the tools to make you know the decisions about their reading life that they can um, I'm always very sensitive to content so I just want to make sure that people have those tools that they need them so anyway that's all obviously you still really enjoyed reading the book so would recommend so that's it for me for this first part of my March wrap up. I will be back with another wrap up uh, here in a few days. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next one. Bye guys.